we now honor the Lord for this opportunity that he gives unto us. We have uh, had uh, only one thing in spirit that is to honor Christ to follow him. That is to give him the praise worship that is due unto him. But in our worship, in our praise, in our prayer, we ought to manifest from our heart an expectation. Somebody say to your neighbor, expectation. Expectation. Say manifest an expectation. Manifest an expectation. Seek an expectation. Desire an expectation. Desire an expectation. Look for an expectation. And be an expectation. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, we have shared among to say that we should come expectation hallelujah i know for the word of god that the lord does not pour out where there is nothing to receive hallelujah so say lord i empty myself pour in me pour in me I empty myself, pour in me without measure, pour in me without limitation, pour in me without limit, in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, expectation of the righteous shall be met. The expectation of the righteous shall be met. We are going to a king that is higher than us. We are going to a master that is higher than us. One who can turn the very water into wine. Just not a wine, but the best of the best of the best. Say, God, my best has started. My best has started. I thank you for my best that has started even now. Even now. Even now. In the name of Jesus Christ. It is through Christ that we are able to achieve. It is through him we are able to advance. It is through Christ we are able to continue. When the spiritual realms of activities of demons, of activities of principalities, of activities of rule of darkness are moving we know that he sends the host of heaven on our behalf to fight the battle and to bring them and to bring down the victory for it is our inheritance for he says no weapon that is formed against me shall never prosper they can gather all their weapon they can build all their weapon the intent of that weapon will not succeed but when God is in my battle I know I am secure say when God is in my battle 
I know I am secured. I know I am victorious. Bless your name, Lord Jesus, for bringing us at your feet, for showing us your ways, and for teaching us your ways all the way. Lead us, guide us, and let your word of truth penetrate our spirit and our soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. So today we're going to read from the Word of God that talks about expectation. Hallelujah. Expectation. If we have the Word of God from the book of Romans, we're going to read chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. And for the sake, we're going to start even a little earlier. We're going to start all down from, uh, actually, I want us to start from verse 1. So we have a good dose of the word of God. So Romans chapter 8 started from verse 1. We're going to read the word of God. And then we start with the King James Version. Romans chapter 8, eight verse, verse 1. one. Mm -hmm. There is therefore now no mm -hmm. condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The word of God says now. When? Now. Amen. There is what? No condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And what? Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. Amen. So there is a condition. The condition is that you are to also walk after the spirit. Hallelujah. So as long as you walk after the spirit of God, there is no condemnation that can be against thee. Continue, sister. Verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Oh, oh Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So all the things that were supposed to happen as a curse, the word of God says, when I come to the Lord Jesus, it is canceled. Hallelujah. They're canceled. 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 All the curses are canceled. The, curse. the curses for the bloodline are canceled. The curses, the curses from my father are canceled. In the name of Jesus Christ. Continue. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. For those who are of the spirit, mind the things of the spirit. Those who are of the carnal also mind the things of the flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Continue. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Because the carnal mind. Now, you know, when we say carnal mind, it does not necessarily mean sinful mind. Meaning a sinner. No. A carnal mind can also be in the life of a believer. Hallelujah. Somebody who's saved and yet his idea and his way of operating is by the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. For it is not subject to the law of God, mm -hmm. neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. Amen. 
very important because where we're going is in the place of expectation. Amen. You cannot have expectation if you operate in the flesh. You can't. Expectation comes from the spirit because the Lord who calls you expects you to bear fruit. And because he expects you to bear fruit, you also let the same mind that is in Christ Jesus be also in you. So your behavior, your attitude, your expectation are ours, the one of Christ. Amen. Amen. Continue. But he are not in the flesh. But ye are not in the flesh. But in the spirit. But in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not, have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if he live after the flesh, he shall die. But he through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body. He shall live. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if you see what God says. We are going to expectation. But you see, the work of Christ in us becomes complete when we allow the spirit of Christ to move in us. And when we allow the spirit of Christ to move in us, he also plant in us expectation. He plant in us desires that comes from his kingdom. Hallelujah. And the word God says that for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, amen, ye shall live. Very important. Every time you have an expectation from God, but it is contrary to the spirit of God, that expectation can take form. So the word of God tells us the right expectation or the expectation of the righteous is that as he's expecting God, he also avails his own life to receive the answer. Does it make sense? Let me put it this way. You have a container and you're expecting to receive the rain. But if in that container there are holes inside, when the rain comes and pour in the container, what are going to happen? He will come out. Hallelujah. And after the rain has passed, you are still. Hallelujah. That's why when you do not live by the flesh as you are a child of God, every poor rain that God puts inside of you does not become a leak. It, just, it rather becomes a flow. Hallelujah. You are not leaking in the spirit. You are flowing in the spirit. That is important to understand. Say, I am flowing in the spirit. I am not leaking in the spirit. For my expectations come from God. I expect to be prosper. I will not die poor. I refuse to die poor. For the expectation of the righteous shall be met. Hallelujah. When Christ died on the cross, he accomplished many deeds. The first one, to deliver me from the power of sin. Now let me explain you something. When you are under the power of sin, you cannot have. Let me repeat again. When you are chosen by God. Let me give you an example. The children of Israel... They were under the power of Pharaoh. Hallelujah. They cannot build for themselves. Why? Because they were chosen by God. When God has his hand on you, until you come under the umbrella of God, 
things will not happen as it's supposed to be. Hallelujah. Because the reason is that he does not want to share his glory with somebody else. He does not want you to believe or to think that it might be because of your skills, your intelligence, or your beautiful eyes. No, he wants to make sure that you know it is the only one who calls your life to advance, to rise, and to be promoted. But the power of sin oftentimes breaks down our expectations. Somebody say, I refuse it. I refuse it. The children of Israel under the power of Pharaoh, they could not have for themselves. By the day they were delivered from that power, that same day they went out with gold. That same day they went out with silver. That same day they went out with prosperity. When God chooses you and delivers you, he does not send you empty-ended. Hallelujah. When God chooses and delivers you, he does not send you empty-ended. There is a purpose why. Because he wants you to build. Amen. He wants you to build. But if the enemy comes to steal what God has placed in your hand, it is for two reasons. Either you were sleeping or you were not aware that God has given you what you had. That's why you need to have expectation. That's why you need to have expectation. Expectation is the brother of faith. Hallelujah. By faith, so by expectation. Let's read the word of God. Continue. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Amen. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Continue. For he have not received the spirit of bondage against, again to fear. Say, I have not received have the spirit of bondage. Say, I have not received... The spirit of bondage. People of God, let me get that right for you. Because you cannot get out of here today without receiving what God has already designed. He says, He has not given you an exchange of your heart that is given to Him, a spirit of bondage. What does it include? A spirit of bondage eventually will include sins the works of the flesh, but also the lack of expectation. When the children of Israel were so much in bondage, they could not even expect to be set free. Are you what I'm saying? They could not even expect that one day there will be something that will get them out. They have been and become a couple that thing. So they were no longer in expectation. And the spirit of bondage comes in diverse ways. The spirit of bondage can make you to even refuse to receive from God. The spirit of bondage can cause you to be blinded from what God is doing. The spirit of bondage can cause you to not recognize the hand of God in your life. The spirit of bondage can cause you to not appreciate the things of God. But worse, the spirit of bondage causes you to despise the small beginning. Are you what I'm saying? But when in the spirit, God delivers your mind, God delivers your heart, God delivers your soul, Suddenly you start seeing as God sees. Say, I see as God sees. I see as God sees. When Gideon was under a spirit of bondage, God went and chose him. And he called him, you are what? A mighty, hallelujah, 
but he looked at himself. And all he was saying was just a man of the threshing floor. Hallelujah. He could not even see what God has spoken over him. He was limited by the perception of his own limitations. But you have to come to a place where you got to say that, Lord, the limitation that the earth has placed over me are broken. Hallelujah. The limitations that the earth has placed over me are broken. I cannot continue to go around the mountain in cycle. God did not call me to go around the mountain. He called me to enter the promise. He did not say go and then stay around. He said go and enter. So whatever God has already spoken, I need to have that expectation. When he told to the children of Israel, go possess the land. They were going. Some of them were going just because they were going. When they saw the giant, they forgot the expectation. Their heart was not consistent knowing that it is God who said, it is, not, it is God who said first even before you desire. And they realized that there were giants they were like, well, it's great to have God, but this case is too complicated. Expectation in the heart of men caused God to shift the time on his behalf. Let me read again. Expectation in the heart of men causes God to shift the time on the behalf of that person. Let me talk about Mary. What did she do? She had an expectation for the miraculous. But the altar of the miracle told her it was not the time. Hallelujah. But she understood that a he does not walk with the time of men. He works with a divine time. And in the divine time, any time is a good time. Are you following what I'm saying? And in that divine time, when she understood that power, she said, I'm not hearing what you say. All I hear is manifestation of power. A person without expectation will hear God telling him, it's not the time. He will say, okay, I will come next. A person with expectation. He says, God, you say it's not time. Which time? Your time or my time? Because I know one thing is that you are able. I know that you have the power. I know that you hold the might. All it takes for you is just a word. You say light and it is. She understood that they did not even have to toil and to go to, uh, to harvest the grape to do the wine. Mm -mm. In normal process, you must toil your heart. Get the grape out, press the grape, get the wine out. But she said, when God is in my boat, whatever water that was not meant for in and use of drink. The Bible said that there was parts that were the water that was meant for what? For, for the washing of the feet and the hands. It is one thing that the water was meant for drink, but in that case, it was not even for drink. It was not even intended to be drunk. But when God stepped into it, the same he used to build you. It does not matter how many microbes there is inside. 
It does not matter how many varies there is inside. It does not matter how many opposition you have. It does not matter how many people have deceived you. It does not matter how many people lie to you. The day he says, even the lie is going to turn it into blessing. I you know what I'm saying? Because the expectation of the righteous shall be met. That's why you have to speak to your heart. My heart expect in the Lord. You got to speak to your heart. You got to say, my heart, stop being idol. I mean, idol. You got to speak to your heart. Because without expectation, you walk without manifestation. Without expectation, you walk without manifestation. In expectation, you know that God is going to do. But then, you pound until you see it. You press until you see it. That's the reason why we haven't received the spirit of bondage. Because in the spirit of bondage, we are limited for expecting the greater to come. In the spirit of bondage, we are limited from expecting the greater to come. I refuse the spirit of bondage. Continue. Verse 16. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then hers, hers of God, and, and, join, and join hers with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in Hallelujah. Earth. Amen. For I reckon, I recognize... That the sufferings that I have went through have nothing to be compared to how God going to glorify himself in my life. This is what it means. If you never suffer in your life, you will suffer. You have to go through it. But if you have suffered in your life, hallelujah, the time of manifestation has arrived. Because it says... I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So you have to come to a process of refining. But when the process of refining is finished, there is now demonstration of the purity of the refining. Whatever you put in, whatever gold that you put inside the fire goes into the process of refining. When that gold comes out, that gold becomes even more valuable than where it went through. Hallelujah. Continue, please. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of... For the, the earnest what? Expectation. The earnest what? Expectation. Of the... Creature. Who is the creature? The entire world. Let me explain you something. In that power of the word, the word of God wants you to understand something. Is that the entire world is expecting you to move and to move. Hallelujah. Glory. The entire world is expecting you to move and to manifest something. The word of God says, for the earnest expectation of the entire creature, of the creature, worth it for the manifestations of the sons of God. Now let me say this. God has imbued you with so much of him that as you walk by even a tree, 
that is not giving fruit, the tree even expects you to speak over it so he can start giving fruit. I don't know if you understand this one. Let me repeat again. When Christ was walking by, his expectation even was also for the tree. He told to the tree that I wanted food. Amen? You know what I'm talking about, right? He told to the, the Bible says he was going and he was hungry. And when he was hungry, he looked at the tree expecting to receive fruit out of it. Look, the expectation was applied even in the nature and to the nature. When the nature did not fulfill the expectation of Christ, the nature was cursed out. So is the expectation that is in you. The expectation that is in you can provide beyond what you see and what you can get. Because your expectation travels into manifestation. Let me explain that in a simple way. Give me this one in Amplify. I'm going to read from the verse, the same verse of Romans 8, and then uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 19. Amplify version. Go ahead. For even the whole creation, all nature, waits eagerly for the children of God to be revealed. Who is the child of God? Hallelujah. If you are born of spirit and water, hallelujah, you are called also a child and the son of God. If you are born and washed by the blood, you are also called a child, a son, a daughter of God. If you are called by God to become son, then you are called to become also heir, meaning prince. Hallelujah. If you are a prince, a prince is not broke. Tell to somebody, a prince is not broke. Your spirit will agree with your father. That what belongs to your father also belongs to you. Does it make sense? Because if it belongs to my father, the Bible says the whole earth belongs to my father. And everything therein. If it belongs to my father, then I expect what belongs to my father to be indeed for me. But in order for me to have it, my father needs to die first. If my father is still alive, I cannot have it. So what he did, he came and died on the cross. Hallelujah. So that in the law of man, it is written that he died. So therefore, what belongs to him is transferred to me. Are you know what I'm saying? He fulfilled the demand of the law of men of nature. In order I receive. He lives now in heaven, right? But you see, he heaven is a manifestation of the things that I hope for when I go there to see him and dine with him and worship him and be with him. But before he went, he gave me something on earth. He's not a cheap father. You know, in some families, unconscious father, they'll go out of the family and then they give nothing for food. They come, they say, ah, I'm going to Italy. But I'll be back. And they don't give a penny for food. That's the earthly father. 
But in the same way, the word of God said, there are also some father who also know how to give good. But our heavenly father, the word of God tells is better than all of them. So what is my expectation that I must have to see the manifestation? Even the three expect me to say something. You're thinking this. You want the property. The property you have expects you to speak to it. If you understand why and how the Lord Jesus Christ was able to go and speak to a tree. The Lord Jesus spoke to the nature. I hear what I'm saying. He spoke to the sea and the wind. Joshua spoke to what? The sun. He said, you, you be still. You need... Let me explain. He could have said, Lord, please stop the wind. No. He said, wind, I command you stop. He could have said, oh, Lord, stop the sun. No. He said, son, I command you, stop. Even the nature is awaiting orders from you. But if in you there is no expectation to see the manifestation of the power of God in you, you will be idle. But the entire creation is awaiting for the revelation, the manifestation of the children of God. Verse 20. Verse 20, for the creation was subjected to frustration and fertility, not willingly because of some intentional fault on its part, but by the will of him who subjected it in hope. Hallelujah. Amen. Continue. That the creation itself will also be freed from its bondage to decay and gain entrance into the glorious freedom of the children of uh, God. Do you understand this one? This is what it means. God is under the earth, right? God is waiting for somebody that will come to unearth it. Even gold. Diamond is under the earth, waiting for somebody that will come to unearth it. The richest is are waiting for somebody that will come to possess it. If you can understand this one, you will get it right. You're thinking that uh, you are seeking. No, it is it that is seeking you. For the word of God says, blessing shall follow me, right? The entire creation is awaiting to enter in your glory. The freedom you have received from God, they want to be free also. They want to be in your possession. They want to be in your care. But with that expectation, you don't see manifestation. Your own heart is expecting from you to feel him. With expectation. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Your soul is a waiting for you to feel it with expectation. Your entire being is a waiting for you to feel it with expectation. The spiritual realm is a waiting for you to give orders. Angels are always on post. 
they are waiting to be used for something. They are waiting to be sent for something. Let me explain to you. If, if you buy, if you buy, um, I will just talk about a machine. Let's say you buy a com oh, you buy a computer or a car or a TV. The expectation of those things is to be turned on and used. Do you know that? It's not, you know, even if you buy something to decorate your home, the expectation of that thing is to decorate your home. Does it make sense? They want to be utilized for the purpose for which you bought them. So the Lord tells you, because you are a child of the king, the creation is expecting to enter into your freedom. For verse 22 says, For we know that the whole creation has been mourning together as in pain of childbirth until now. They were seeking, who going to possess me? Who going to be my? They were seeking, they were waiting. But the Bible says, until now. What it means is that now you have to enter and see the manifestation. Because the manifestation is not tomorrow. That's why the expectation for the manifestation has arrived. When the train that you were looking for comes in and you are at the station, if that is the train that you need to take and then you wait for the next you know with me, you are either going to be late or you ain't going to be there at all. Because if by any means is the last train, you will find yourself walking to destination. But before you arrive, you will feel it. By the time you arrive, it's closed. What you are waiting for, when it passes by, don't salute it, possess it. But you cannot recognize your time of visitation if you are not even expecting a time of visitation. The time will come and pass. And you will wait just like the Jew waiting for Jesus. They're still waiting for the Messiah. The Bible says when he came, they did not recognize him. And yet they were expecting him to come. But they miss it because they misplaced them, they invested incorrectly their expectation. He arrived. They should have been recognized and entered into his peace. This brings me to my second point. When you expect something from God and it comes, you might not be saying, wow. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, 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 no. Zachariah, he wanted a child. He prayed for a child. He expected a child. Mary, she did not pray for a child. Amen? But she was in the spiritual and the spirit of expectation. She was able by faith to grab whatever was given. So when the Lord comes, I mean the angel comes, the angel tells to Mary, you're going to have a child. She does not question it. She asks question about it. When you question the answer God gives you, you're going to wait. But when you ask question on how to do so, you're going to receive. Mary, did not question the ability of God. She asked to God, how are you going to be? Zachariah. He was the one who asked for a child. 
Mary didn't. But she was able to believe. Zachariah asked for a child. The angel comes. Zachariah, you're going to have a child, a boy. I say, hmm. <laughs> Are you sure? And this is how he goes. He said, even me and my wife, we do hold. So you knew you were old and you were asking for children? <laughs> Hallelujah. You knew you were old. You shouldn't be asking. You were the one who asked for it. And when the angel comes, he tells him with clarity, he said, your prayer have been answered. So we know he asked for it. But because he questions the ways of the Lord, his expectation become muted. When you expect God to move and you see the move, what you ought to do is to seize and to expand it. To seize and to multiply it. To seize and to enlarge it. If you say, God, please bless me. Give me finances. And God gives you $100,000. You use that $100,000 to invest, to multiply it. You don't eat the seed. You plant the seed. But when the expectation comes and you don't understand, you start buying shoes, ribbon, cravat, voiture, maison. You, you, some, some people, they even buy wife to Zara. <laughs> Because the girl he was trying to have for a long time, she didn't want to be with him because he was broke. So when the money arrived, he said, Sherry, I want to invite you to the restaurant. <laughs> but because before he could not do that, so he was taking her to uh, McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was taking her to fast food. So my, my, my point is, you have to learn that when God provides unto you, it's because he manifests from your expectation. There was a woman. The Bible says she was a Syrophoenician. She had a daughter who was possessed. She went to see the Lord. She arrived in the area where Christ was. She expected to meet him. Not to meet the disciple. Hallelujah. She wanted to meet the master. Even if the disciple received power. Even if the disciple received authority. She said, why would I meet a disciple if the king is there? <laughs> Hallelujah. So she expected to meet the disciple. I mean the, 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 the master. Jesus Christ. But... That expectation was not just to meet him and to see how great he is. It was to receive so that the manifestation happens. When she went, they told her all kinds of things. She knew she has one purpose. It was to meet the master. When in your heart you have expectation and they're denied to you, the denial only gives you the strength to use that other raft. Because you know you are supposed to arrive. You know you are supposed to achieve. So when they say no over here, the no only like you you only like the way it, it, it rings in your hearing is that oh it is that other way. It is not a no for you to go back and say ah it is over. Expectation Cause you to press until manifestation happens. Read. Verse 23. And not only this, but we too, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, a joyful indication of the blessings to come. Even we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the sign the sign of our adoption as sons, the redemption and transformation of our body at the resurrection. Hallelujah. Look at the beauty of this one. In the physical, they know the position. 
they know what they ought to have. And then in the spiritual, they also know what they're going to have. Now, here's my question. When the last time you expected Christ to come back? Are you what I'm saying? Because I, I, I will tell you this. When your spirit and your mind start agreeing with the plans of heaven, you cannot miss what God has assigned for you on earth. How much do you expect the move of God? What do you expect from God? What do you expect from Christ? How much do you want? How much do you expect it? Take for me the book of Psalms. Chapter 9. I'm going to read verse 18. The book of Psalms, chapter 9. We're going to read verse 18. Psalm chapter 9, verse 18. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Hallelujah. Amen. The expectation of the poor shall not perish. So you are not born to die poor. Is that clear? For the word of God says, even if you were born poor, your expectation will not perish. Hallelujah. But if you are born poor and you don't have expectation, poverty will kill you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Expectation. Continue. Verse, um, uh, I said, yeah. Verse 9. No, 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 no. Let, let's go now in uh, Psalms chapter 62, verse 5. Uh, let, let me give you three verses that you can take there so that, that we can read through. So I'm going to give you Psalms 62, verse 5, and Proverbs 23, verse 18, and Proverbs 24, verse 14. So I'll read again. Psalms 62, verse 5. Proverbs 23, verse 18, and Proverbs 24, verse 14. Continue. Psalm 62. Uh -huh. Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. My soul, soul wait thou only upon God. God for? My expectation is from him. Do you understand this one? When your soul understand that it is God that is the altar and the source, God himself gives you expectation. For my expectation comes from him. When your soul seeketh God and is seeketh God correctly, God in turn plants expectation so you can expect him. To do something. But if your soul does not wait correctly and enter correctly and serve correctly, expectation does not come in. For the Bible says, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. God says he wants to reward you. But you must diligently hold the expectation. My soul, wait thou only upon God. For my expectation is from him. Take Proverbs 23, 18. Proverb twenty three eighteen. 
For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Amen. There is an end of things, but your expectation in Christ will not be wasted. But you must have expectation. You must have expectation. Continue the next verse. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 14. Proverbs 24, verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. So does the knowledge, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it. When thou hast found it. Then there shall be a reward. Then there shall be a reward. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, there will be expectation. Uh, sorry, there will be a reward because you have an expectation. Hallelujah. There will be a reward because you have expectation. Take with me Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. I believe many of you know the verse. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. After that, we're going to take Luke chapter 3, verse 15. And afterward, we're going to take Acts chapter 3. Verse 5. I'm going to read again. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. Afterward, we're going to have Luke chapter 3, verse 15. And afterward, we're going to have Acts chapter 3, verse 5. It for me, Jeremiah 29, 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the thought that I think toward you, said the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, I said, when you are connected to God, it gives you the expectation. Amen. Because it comes from him. A heart connected to God without expectation, either you receive and trash it, <laughs> amen, or your plug disconnected. Because it gives you an expected end. It causes you to see what you awaited from him. Hallelujah. Next verse, continue. Luke chapter 3, verse 15. Luke chapter 3, verse 15. And as the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their heart of joy, whether he were the Christ or not. Hallelujah. Amen. That was at the time when Christ was to come, but they did not know. And John the Baptist was baptizing around. And they were expecting because they were looking for a Messiah. So the Bible says all men were in their heart. Is, is, is it the Messiah? Is not the Messiah? Is he the one to come? Is not the one? So, so they started manifesting, hallelujah, in their heart. But is, is that the one? Is not the one? So the Bible says... And all and, and, and as the people were in expectation, they were in expectation. But here's the thing. The expectation that they had was to see a king that would deliver him from oppression of the Romans. They wanted to have a deliverance from physical oppression. But Christ wanted to give them first deliverance from spiritual oppression. Because when you are spiritually free, physically you are at peace. Hallelujah. You can be physically free, but spiritually, you are in bondage. So Christ wanted to give them the real freedom. He says, my peace I do not give unto you as the world gives, but as I give. This is another point. When your expectation is incorrectly placed, you will also manifest deception, frustration, and then you will not have the manifestation. That's why the Bible says, when you pray a miss, hallelujah, you're going to also receive a miss. <laughs> Amen. So your expectation has to be correctly placed. Let me put it in an example. You cannot have expectation like David. You see the wife of somebody, you say, pray, Lord, oh Lord Jesus, let that wife be for me. <laughs> Amen. It ain't going to happen. 
or somebody is uh, your boss because you don't like his head. You say, oh, Lord Jesus, fire him so you're going to have his, boss, his position. He ain't gonna, <laughs> he's going to happen. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Correct expectation. Amen. Let's go to the next one. Acts chapter 3, verse 5. Acts chapter 3, verse 5. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Who was that? The lame. Where? At the gate, beautiful. He was at the right place, brought there by the wrong people. Because the right person will not leave you at the gate. He will take you in. Amen? They help him and they drop him. Many people come in your life. And they act like they're going to help you, but you are only be dropped. <laughs> Amen. But when the one comes, you also must have expectation. Because the Bible says he was expecting to receive something from them. Hallelujah. Expectation. Tell to your neighbor, expectation brings manifestation. Christ Jesus, he went to his own. They did not have expectation. All they got, it was a two-penny miracle. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible said that he did just a few healing over there. That was it, but no miracle. But before he got there, there was miracle being lined up throughout the city. Expectation. Now, let me tell you something. When people who are among those that God called are not manifesting expectation, they die in the wilderness. The other one, go. Hallelujah. He brought the children of Israel. He told them, I'm going to bring you into the promised land. He wanted them to expect to enter the promised land. Ten of them, they decided not to expect. They decided rather to complain. They said, no, 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 no. God says so, but uh, do you see the giant? God says so, but do you see how strong the adversary is? God says so, but do you think really that God really, really wants us to go there? <laughs> If, yeah, amen. So now, they start using their fleshy mind and carnal mind to try to explain what they were fearing of, acting like God was the one speaking. Instead of saying, yo, we know we are grasshopper. We don't believe what God said. It's better. Because when you are frank, truthful in your belief process, God will help you. Because the man and the woman who goes before God and pray, but God who knows your heart sees that inside is different, you won't receive. Hallelujah. So it is better to be like the tax collector Lord, I am a sinner. I don't deserve it. God said, you, I like you. I'm going to promote you. But don't also go around. You know God. And then you're trying to do, hey, I'm a sinner. I won't like it. I won't have it. God won't give you nothing. <laughs> <laughs> don't do the, 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 the Catholic prayer. The Catholic prayer is saying, Je vous salue, Marie. Plein de grâce. Le Seigneur est avec vous. Vous êtes béni en toutes les femmes. Et Jésus, le fruit de vos entrailles, est béni. Sainte Marie, Mère de Dieu, priez pour nous, pauvres pécheurs. Mm. I was like, so, I don't know how we say that in English, but that portion says, Hail Mary, full of grace. Well, go ahead for me. 
Blessed among women. Amen. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Holy Mary. Eh? You can say in the French, I say in the English. Huh? Holy Mary. Hmm? Pray for us. <laughs> and now, here's the worst. Pray for us. Poor sinner. Is there a sinner can be poor? <laughs> I'm a sinner. You, you rich in sin. You should not marry say, pray for us rich sinner because your sinner has accumulated. So you cannot pray a prayer that you don't even believe. That you don't even know what to say. The expectation of the king is that the subject be subjected. But the expectation, the expectation of, the, of the subject is that the king provides. That's what the Bible says. Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God. And he will lift you up in due time. Now, I told you last Sunday that today you must come with expectation. But many of you did not. Lift your hand because you didn't. Lift your hand. You did not. Lift your hand. Who are the ones who did not come with expectation? So you, uh, don't everybody come with expectation? You, come here. You, yes, come. Hmm? Okay, come here. Come, come over here. Come over here. What's your name? Marie. How old are you? Um, I'm she doesn't know her, her age. <laughs> she will not expect her age. <laughs> you cannot have birth gift. Birth, 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 birth gift. What's the name of your husband? Abanda. Abandu or Abanda? Abandon or Abanda? Abanda. My wife say Abandon. <laughs> How many children do you have? Two. What do you expect from God? In the name of Jesus Christ, I call the power of God right now to completely refresh your body, to completely remove the sting of the enemy out of your life. Lord, cover her with your power and let healing right now, Lord God, spring up in her life in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Yeah, see that you have a gun. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I usually have some kind of weird dreams, mm -hmm. it's like a spiritual attack. So I expect to be free from that. Hallelujah! Give me oil. Give me anointing oil. As you were talking, what the Lord showed me was to anoint your toe. You know, God does things I don't understand myself. So, take your toe out. Those of you watching who don't understand, I will invite you to read from the book of Kings to understand how prophets operate. Oftentimes, they will ask the king to shoot just arrow out of the, the window. The window. The guy came to ask the king, he said, Ah, uh, there is an enemy that is against us. Instead of saying, in the name of Jesus, bring fire against the enemy. You say shoot arrow. Arrow where? In the window. What is that arrow in the window we do against the enemy? But spiritually, it was a victory. And how many times you would have shot is how many times you will win. Hallelujah. Father, I bless your name, Lord God. I thank you for your dark. take it. Lord God, every spell 
every spell that was cast before her feet, in any of them that she walked in, I remove it out of her feet in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God. But I proceed. Every nail, Lord God, that has been sent on a path, Lord God, we destroy and remove it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, let her walk in the newness of spirit. Let her walk in the newness of life. Let her walk in the newness of the spirit. Let her walk in the newness of life. I command your feet to carry on the attribute of the God that is above all. I command victory in your dreams, in your life, in everything. Every portion you go, every territory if your dream, in your dream, every land, every ground thou shalt tread upon, shall thou possess. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hmm? Okay, tell me, what's your expectation, boy? Because last time I had a headache. So your expectation is to heal your head? Yeah. Okay, headache. Okay. Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you that uh, you provide healing, Lord God. The Bible said that uh, when you went uh, to the mother-in-law of uh, Peter, Indeed, immediately she received, she was refreshed, healed, and started serving. I call healing right now in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the expectation of the righteous shall not perish. The expectation of the poor shall not perish. Hallelujah. Expectation. Expectation. If every day you wake up with expectation to eat in Dole, you you are, you are gonna you you gonna eat in Dole only. But if you wake up in expectation to have a factory for in Dole, you will eat and you will sell. Are you following what I'm saying? Is that you have to now start becoming not an employee, but a wealth manu. Somebody say, I'm, I am a wealth manufacturer. I am a wealth manufacturer. I am a wealth manufacturer. I will not only accept to receive the penny. To receive the crumbs, for I am a child of the king. The word of God said, Your time has arrived. But it is now. Expectation brings manifestation. You have an expectation? Come over here. Mm -hmm. What's your expectation? Love expectation. Okay, give me two. My expectation is that God will give me wisdom to discern what is right and wrong. Okay, Father God, you said that if anyone lacks wisdom, let him pray. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I impart it in your life, just as Paul imparted gifts. I impart it in your life, just as God has breathed over the Spirit, on the Spirit. I pray right now that the Spirit of God upon you, even as on the disciple, brings in your life wisdom. Even as wisdom was come in the life of Solomon, I call wisdom in your life. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. And my second expectation is healing since I'm feeling good still. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I have a the anointing oil, please. Hallelujah. Rabba prosikiti rabba rante kasa. 
Raba oskita abadele la machidada. Pa pre oski patelo soto rodo boshia. Maka pale chatelelele la ba. Give me your hands. Alleluia. Put your hand on your belly. Alakabashi brante de 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 what the enemy has not planted, he cannot reap. So, Lord, I bind out the feet of the enemy for what he has not planted. Lord God, you have planted your data to grow in harvest. Every sickness that was planted by the enemy... Every sickness that was planted by the enemy, we destroy the roots of it. And the life that you have planted in her, he cannot take it away. And the sickness that he has planted, we destroy it. We destroy it. And the healing that you have planted, he cannot take away. We call healing in a life right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Be healed, Dada. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, somebody has a petition. Amen. Come. Come. Come over here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. What's your name? My name is Abanda. How old are you? I'm 42. Ah, you know his age. <laughs> Hallelujah. How tall are you? I'm 5.6 inch. He, he, he knows. <laughs> okay. Uh, how was your weight? 145. <laughs> Lord, the Lord is ready for him. Say somebody, Jesus is ready for him. The Lord Jesus is ready for him. What's your expectation? Uh, I have a lot of expectations. But Give me the first two. thing is, mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. I want the Lord to touch me, fill me with the Spirit so that I should be connected and reconnected with Him always. Lift up your hands. Can I have the oil, please? The Bible says that the men who are wrong and an evil know how to give good gifts to their children. How much more the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. Father, it is your will. The Bible says when the disciple went, Peter and John went to the those who were believing in Christ. And they came and they lay hand upon them and they received the Holy Ghost. And they received the Holy Ghost to prophesy, to speak mystery, to prophesy, to speak mystery. In the name of Jesus, received the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Let it be completely saturating of and in your life Amen. that the power of God, that the power of the Spirit of God, that the presence of the Holy Ghost shall continually dwell in you. Amen. Become sealed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. 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 What's your second expectation? My second expectation is I need God to open a wide door of new employment, feel of financial breakthrough, so that I can be a help to people because I need, I want, and I really want to assist people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says, for he is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you may ask or think are called into the power that working in you. Lord Jesus, I call him to be owner. I call him to be owner. Business owner. Amen. Business owner. Amen. Let him work, Lord God, in breakthrough. Amen. And Lord, cause door. Cause financial door. Cause financial door and finances to come in his life, Lord God, to cause him to own. I call wealth to seek you. I call wealth to seek you. 
I call wealth to seek you. I call wealth to seek you. I call wealth right now. Seek him, touch him in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, embue him with your power of wealth. Let him have power for her. Shapra Sekata Kata. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Expectation. For the expectation of the righteous shall be met. Shall not be forgotten. He has an expectation of the baby. Bring him here. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. Little Abenda. What's your expectation? There you go. Uh -huh, say it again. You can, you can say it loud. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. What's your expectation? Uh huh. Go ahead. Okay. You say it again. Okay. Hallelujah. 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 You know, that little sound he made is like when you see something that is beyond your imagination, you're like, huh? Hmm? Wow. Oh, y'all, please. Child of God, I pray that because of you, many will prosper. Because of you, many will come to Christ. Because of you, deliverance will happen. Because of you, door will open. I pray that the light that is in you be placed above and that you lighten many paths. I call that the Spirit of God use you mightily, little boy. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. you will be an amazement for many. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. The expectation of the righteous shall not be forgotten. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, thank you. Lord God, I will thank you for healing in his eye right now. We bless you, Lord God, for the expectation of the righteous shall be met. Let healing right now be met unto him in the name of Jesus Christ. Every spit of the enemy, we take it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Refresh, Lord God, his nerves. Refresh, Lord God, his optics. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Who is blessed? Hallelujah. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed to reign. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed to reign. I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed to reign. Hallelujah. There is a blessing with my, with your name on it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I got a blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got a blessing with my name on it. Amen. Amen. The expectation of the righteous shall be met. Let me read three more, three more verses and we shall close. Take for me Acts. Acts chapter 12 verse 11. Acts chapter 12, verse 11. 
And when Peter was come to himself, and when Peter was come to himself, what happened is that Peter was uh, put into jail. And as he was there, the church pray. Church is important. Hallelujah. As he could not function alone, the church pray on his behalf. And the power of prayer bombarded heaven. An answer came. But not in the spiritual form only. He came physically to shake the gates of the prison. So much so that Peter thought he was in a vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you're going to surprise me so greatly, so greatly that I will remain amazed. God will hit you with blessings so greatly. He will pass over you like a train with blessing. You will be wet like the rain wets the ground with blessings. For the expectation of the poor shall not be forgotten. It is God who gives wealth, who gives health, who gives power, who gives authority, who gives favor, who gives grace. Say, every mud that the enemy has placed over my face is removed, is removed. Is removed. Now, favor is on my face. Favor is on my face before men and before God in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, in the spirit, the enemy and the agents of enemy. They put mud on people's face. And how it manifest is that wherever you go, they don't give you opportunity. Whatever you try, they, they don't give you opportunity. People don't like you without reason. Even those who want to help you don't like you. The enemy has put a mask of a mud. Pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every mud out of my face. I destroy every mud out of my face. Let your light and your countenance shine on my face. When Moses met God, the glory of God contaminated his face. Say, God, let your glory contaminate me. Let your glory contaminate my face. Contaminate my face. Yes, Lord. He took only a moment. Your glory. For it to happen. Regardless of how many years he has went through the desert. How many years he has been lost into Egypt. He took a moment for God to contaminate him with his glory. To rise in the spirit. We cause you to see the rain flow. Drain are you expecting?
God is waiting to manifest. He's waiting to manifest. He's looking for hearts that are hungry to manifest. He's looking for hearts that are thirsty to pour in. Read for me. And when Peter was come to himself, and when Peter was come to himself, he said, he said, now I know for a surety, now I know for surety that the Lord had sent His angel. Hallelujah. Amen. I told you that angels are there waiting to do something on your behalf. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. When he was in trouble, the church pray, and God sent. An angel. This is the New Testament. Hallelujah. Continue. And had delivered me out of the hand of Herod. And hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod. Herod. And Continue. from all the expectation of the people. And from of the all Jews the expectation of, of the, the people of the Jews. Jews. Now there are contrary expectations. The expectation of the enemy is to see you fall. But the Bible says, he will wait for long. The Bible says that when Paul, at the island in Patmos, uh, um, um, no, no, not Patmos, Patmos is John. Uh, Malta, thank you. When he arrived, there was a fire that did. He put his hand and there come a viper and fasten itself to his arm. And the Bible says that the barbar, hallelujah, there are many barbar around, barbarous, the barbarians. They know nothing. They were sitting expecting him to fall and die. But the Bible say, after they waited for so long, in Jesus. The enemy has been sitting, sitting, waiting for you to fall and to be destroyed. But the Bible say, after they sat for so long, God demonstrated the power in the life of Paul. Now the barbarian starts saying, ah, this one is a god though. <laughs> but the Bible said, before he left, they blessed him. Before, the same barbarian who was waiting for him to fall, the same one, God struck them and they blessed him. The number of my enemy is a culmination of my blessing. Because the Bible says it dresseth a table in the presence of my enemies. What it means in Hebrew is that he's going to tax each one of them to pay for my feast. The expectation of the wicked shall be cut off. But the expectation of the righteous shall be met. But he says, he will gather the wealth of the wicked and place in the hand of his child. It is the will of God that my soul prosper. Hallelujah. Amen. And that I be also in good health. And that I prosper. Read for me. Hallelujah. Read for me. Philippians chapter 1 verse 28. And then we will finish with the Hebrew chapter 10, verse 13. So, 
no, um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, not 28. Philippians 1, chapter 1, um, Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, and Hebrew 10, verse 13. Philippians 1, verse 20. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. According to my earnest expectation and my hope. That in nothing I shall be ashamed. Hallelujah. Amen. It is according to his expectation. That in nothing he will be ashamed. Because in his expectation, whatever that happened, God is going to have the glory. Hallelujah. Continue. But that with all boldness as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Hallelujah. So as long as I live, Christ will meet my expectation. Even if he have died, my expectation also will be met. Hallelujah. Amen. So at the end of the day, Christ is going to use everything that is me. The Bible said that there was a man who died. And he was thrown into the pit. And he touched the bones of Elisha. And he came back to life. Even the bones of Elisha after his death was in expectation. Hallelujah. When God is blessing, when God is touching, when God is transforming you, your entire being is renewed. Let's read the last verse. Hebrew chapter 10. Put it on the screen for us, please. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 13. From henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his food stool. So what it means is that in French we say, qu'il pleuve or qu'il neige. I will arrive. Whether rain or snow, I'm going to get there. The word of God says that uh, there is a great expectation that is set in the heavenly. That all the enemies of God will be made a foot stool. Now let me give you a picture. When somebody gives or shoots at you a rock, throws at you a rock. In the kingdom, God used those rocks to make stair for you. And now... The one who threw the rock, without knowing, is participating into your wealth. And you don't even have to pay for rocks anymore. I, 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 I what I'm saying. God has protected you with a shield. And when the enemy throws the rock, he does not attain you. He only falls before you. And that rock is used and turned around. So instead of complaining, remain in expectation. That to somebody. Instead of complaining, remain in expectation to see the manifestation in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I bless you, Lord God, for what you provided to us. For you said that the expectation of the poor shall not be cut off. The expectation of the righteous shall be met. I thank you, Lord God, that you're meeting it even now. That you let your rain pour out in every expectation of heart. Every heart where there an expectation, Lord. Let the manifestation of it be met now. I pray it in the name of Jesus. In the now, in the now, Amen. in the now, Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Amen.